Who in the world does a video at midnight? Anyone who wants an audience wouldn't do it at midnight. I know that. And you know that. Anyway, but I'm doing it. They're trying to suppress my numbers here and there, but we're, we're just coming out. We refuse to stop. We're going to keep on, bam, hitting it. I'll tell you what, I'm getting so provoked. You know what culture is? I just found it's amazing. I was, I was uh, in my office tonight, and I found a stack of papers. I've been looking for this thing for a long time. I, I did this like years ago, four years ago. I outlined a whole book. And, you know, so I'm, I, I got this book now which is God's chaos code, explaining the chaos. You know, this election may not be decided in November because the chaos continues because the Democrats are going to try to steal it and ballot stuff. You know, they got 60, you know, last year, uh, 600,000 more people signed up on ballots in Florida, just Florida alone. Oh, mamma mia. And you know what? Here's what I'm realizing. God's chaos code. We got the, we got literally all this stuff that's happening. So I, I knew Kamala Harris was there. I saw it. I said it. I don't even like being right on this kind of stuff, but uh, but here's what here's what I was reading. This is this this and it struck me. Boom! Here's what it says: change, permanent change. It's it comes from the top down. That's why they've got to get the, the control the Senate and Congress and the Supreme Court because you control culture from the top down. It's kind of like the pilot behind that locked door. He controls what's happening. But movements catalyze from the bottom up. See the street craziness that's going on, all the, the Bernie Brigade, the Black Lives Matter, the Antifa people, they're all Democrat, they're all Democrat funded things from Democracy Alliance. These are the Soros and other people funding it. They got the Media Matters talking points on CNN and MSNBC. They're all saying the blah, 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 the same thing they're told to say. And you know what I'm realizing as I'm listening to this stuff that they've got a fake movement, they got an orchestrated movement, they got a movement of manipulated outrage. They were looking for an incident that they could that they could work with. My God, it's it's like demonically inspired. And you know, Christians are saying, "What do we do? What are we doing? What what's our movement? Um, you know, coordination. We don't have one. But you know, Franklin Graham's going to be guy. He's saying he probably got a call from the president. Said, so "Where are you guys? Everybody's on the street protesting. Everybody's got a voice." So I go to Tulsa. And I can't even get the Christians in Tulsa to show up. Everybody else shows up in the street. So uh, Franklin said, we have to make a statement. They won't respect that we even exist. You understand? They don't even believe we exist. There's like 30 million of us that are like red meat eaters out there. I mean, I even got my Trump shirt on today. Do you know how, 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 how anointed Trump's name is right now? I used to be nervous about wearing a Jesus shirt. Jesus, for all of us, is easy. I could wear a Jesus hat easier than I could wear a Trump hat. And you know what I'm saying is true. Because that's how Jesus is right now abstract for people. Trump is concrete. He'll, he'll, you'll get devils to manifest on him. Because he's, he's, he's a tangible, definable something. Movements catalyzed from the bottom up. Permanent change comes from gatekeepers at the top down. Gatekeepers respond to movements. They're creating a fake movement on the streets. They're mouthing it with their wolf blitzer spritzer. And, uh, you know, they're... Uh, meanwhile, Trump, what has Trump done? He just did what if Obama had done this, they'd be treating it like a UFO landing because he was the most incompetent negotiator. The only deal he could come up with was giving away like $100 billion to Iran so that they could have a, you know, a disciplined path to a nuclear weapon. And, uh, and Trump comes along, and this week he's got, listen, the, the, the fact that, that he has the, uh, the, uh, Arab, the Arab nations now ha having peace with Israel, and there's some 14 other nations that are getting lined up because they don't want Iran and Turkey and, uh, and craziness like ISIS to, to be able to, uh, to emerge again. So they're aligning together. Trump, Trump is doing more to facilitate Middle East peace than, uh, than any other president in the United States. And they just hate him for that. They cannot forgive him. How dare he do this without consulting us? I mean, this is what we get paid to do. Do you remember those, those absolute moronic 
um, experts that were all hand-wringing when he's talking to North Korea. He could get us all blowing up. Why doesn't he talk to Mike Pence? Why doesn't he talk to one of the experts? Trump goes, I don't need you guys. You guys, you guys can't build an economy. Oh, and this line from Kamala Harris. If this one isn't the one that do you, I'm ready, I'm ready to, I'm ready, I don't know, is Jerry Lewis or Tongues is going to hit me. She says, there we were, rolling along with President Obama's economic recovery till Trump ruined it with the COVID virus. I, listen, let me say it again. We were rolling along with the Obama economic recovery till Trump screwed it up. Let me tell you something. I don't mind people that are not smart uh, being in the Oval Office because they got other people around them that can kind of protect them from pushing nuclear buttons and stuff. But when they are not smart and they tell you something that is as placidly and tangibly and obviously dumb as President Obama had a great recovery going on until Trump screwed it up, then I don't think it's IQ anymore. I think it's, I really, I think it's a spiritual thing because everybody else there went, exactly, this was President Obama's miracle recovery. You remember when President Obama said, by what kind of magic wand is Donald Trump just gonna bring those jobs back? See, he out of his own mouth said he didn't have an economic solution. He believed that America had to have a managed and orderly and disciplined decline as a world power. And then Trump come along. And be like, so for her to say that Trump screwed up Obama's recovery, I'm, I'm thinking the fact that she could say that, that's not an intelligence problem. That's, de that's deception. That's when you are deceived and other people. And then I realized there's a verse. And I actually, I put it in the last, the last minute edit there on my uh, God's chaos code because I said I might as well say it. I'm thinking it. But the Bible says that um, in the last days, that those that uh, are, are, are um, imposters are going to deceive, and evil men shall wax worse and worse, both deceiving others and being deceived themselves. And I started digging, wait, so I don't think people are gonna get better and better. Don't be looking for an American awakening where everybody's gonna get better and better. The best that you're ever going to have is an American awakening where you can at least recover the cockpit and bar the door so that Al Qaeda doesn't get in. Then you can run, fly the plane, and uh, land the plane, and uh, you know you just got to you just got to keep the um, the disruptive people from getting in the cockpit. And so what we want to do is see an awakening which is going to get um, millions of people saved and engaged in protecting America from takeover, from these lawless, orchestrated anarchists on the street and the people at the top that believe that Obama had an economic recovery till Trump screwed it up with a virus. Do you remember that Donald Trump, this, this is kind of, this is so maddening. Remember when Donald Trump said uh, he was shutting off all transportation, all flights in, he was gonna be blocking people from coming in from China. And I still had like 100,000 people came in because of, the deep state and the bureaucrats all have a way around that. But he basically stopped flights from China. And it was Biden on record who said, well, that's not the way to do it. Just insult your allies and friends. And, and this is pure xenophobia. This is pure nationalistic hubris. This is sheer paranoid incompetence dealing with the global order. Why did he do that to China? I'd never do that if I was president. In other words, he would have prolonged the flights coming in. He's on record saying that. Joe Biden, eight years in the White House, in the White House with Barack Obama. What innovative idea was he holding on to that he couldn't wait to release when he gets to be when I get to be president? Oh boy, do I have some ideas? I've got ideas. I'm gonna do things you will believe it, honey. Nobody believes that. He doesn't have one innovative idea. I'll do what science tells me to do. And if science says 
put on a mask. I'll put on a mask. All right. So we're all going to be wearing masks because science told Joe Biden to do it. What he's trying to say is, <clears throat> I'm going to listen to the people around me that tell me things. That's exactly the kind of person <clears throat> we don't need in Washington right now. Because the people that are telling people things, digging us into a hole. Now, I believe God is sending thunderbolts to America. I'm telling you. But this virus, boom. The wiping out of our, of our economy, <clears throat> boom. Then the, the, uh, the uh, continued anarchy in the streets. This is all, this is like the devil, but I think it's for a purpose. I think it's to wake up the church. We're sitting there praying for an awakening like God, like, some, God, like somebody else has to do something. It's us who's asleep. So anyway, I don't know why we're not hearing more about this. I got a meeting coming up. You know, we're going to be doing a conference up there. We're going to be doing it right there before the election. Going right there into Washington, D.C. We're going to be there at the, the Trump Hotel. If the mayor allows us to meet there, who knows? These Democrat mayors painting the city all over the place. Got a city in corruption and crime and chaos, but at least they can paint streets. They got some skills. Anyway, I don't know if they're going to let us meet the Trump Hotel, but I'm planning on it. So we're going to go up there four days before the election right there on Reformation Day. It's going to be like, what, October 30th, October 31st. Bam. But I'm going to go up there again. I'm going up to Washington again. You know why? Because I found out that Franklin Graham is saying, I told you, I think he got a call from the president saying, where are you people? We absolutely have to stop hiding out. And I am so fed up with our disunity. Only now, a couple of geniuses in our community are realizing, well, Cameron Harris might not be good. Oh, you think so? You think so? Really there, Tiger? They're all saying like, well, maybe she's not such a good idea. Yeah, well... She was the most unpopular candidate. She bailed out faster, which is why I couldn't understand. Why was I, why was I hearing, why was I hearing she was, she was, she was going to potentially be in the president's office? I said, why, why? How could that be possible? Then, then, then she, then she failed and flamed out so badly in the primaries that I thought, boy, I really got to be careful about what I'm listening to around here. All right. Here's the deal, Liz Sale. The Democratic Party didn't want her. The voters didn't want her. Barack Hussein Obama wanted her. You know why? She's revenge. And by the way, Bernie and Barack are behind the scenes on all this stuff. You don't think anything of stuff's going on with these cities, these mayors, these protests that don't have, uh, they couldn't get the, uh, the slack jerked out of them by, um, by the higher ups. This is the, this is, this is the disgusting thing about America right now. People don't see it. They don't see the obvious. These people are funded by the deep, deep pocket Democrat donors. You look at them on the street. You think these guys are flying themselves into these cities? Oh, I, I, had a, I had a guy in the intelligence community say he clocked 20 of them coming into Tulsa when Trump went there. They're getting paid to fly into these places and organize this stuff. Who's paying them? Why isn't there ever an investigation on that, Mr. Mueller? Why do we never insist on an investigation? I'm telling you something. I'm getting so tired of this stuff. Better be two million of us marching up there in Washington, a safe distance from one another, social distancing, of course. Uh, but uh, I wanted to read this to you. It's an important quote. <clears throat> culture, culture, what is culture? Culture is about how societies define good and bad, right and wrong, the important and the unimportant, the true and the false, the real and the unreal. I am so tired. Christians themselves are letting the world and its manipulated narrative tell us about what the good and bad is and what the right and wrong is and what's important and unimportant. How about this? How about forget it? They don't know what they're talking about. Why don't we just say it? I'm checking out of your game. I'm not even in your game anymore. You guys are crazy. I talked to a German once. American citizen, older guy. I had this in my book. And, uh, and I found out that when he was young, he was in the Waffen-SS, Nazi-SS. He was an immigrant. 
came to the United States. German, Germany and America is a great country. We're the only country you can go to war with, try to kill us, and then after the war, we let you immigrate and come, come into our country. So anyway, these, this isn't like, you know, Al-Qaeda types that are always fighting you. These are just people like, I said to him, I said, How, why, well, did you ever meet Hitler? I was, I was a kid at the time. Imagine, imagine a dumb question like that. Hey, did you ever meet Hitler? <clears throat> but I asked him, did you ever meet Hitler? He said, well, yeah, I mean, once uh, we are standing there on the street and he came by and the vehicle and they were standing, oh, to us, he was a god. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, you know, they were beaten in World War I. They were there, kicked around by the world. They, they were broke. They were starving. They had the Great Depression. All of their Deutschmarks were in wheelbarrows to go get a loaf of bread. They were, they were had no self-respect. The Treaty of Versailles was, was abusive to them. Dropping a little history language on you there to impress you. And uh, maybe it wasn't the Treaty of Versailles. <laughs> I had, to look, I had to edit that out of my Facebook video. Anyway, so he goes, and then, you know, then we're, we're our economy recovered. And uh, then we were, we were back and we were respected. We were feared and we were conquering in Germany. And I said, wow. And then what happened? And then he said, <laughs> for a pause, he said, that was when we found out the guy was flipping crazy. <laughs> He was flipping crazy. Well, because they got an award, they're all getting bombed out, they're all getting killed, they're starved, you know. They're, it's like then they realize the guy's a loon. Hitler's a lunatic. Let me tell you something about culture. Christians better start showing up. They got the media. They got the news. When was the last time you could even get a commencement speaker on a college campus? Can't even go to a Dang Broadway show before COVID showed up. But poor Pence trying to sneak out of the White House one day, goes with his daughter on a birthday, and they stop the whole dang, you know, uh, what to call it, production up there of Hamilton and point him out in the audience and let him know he's really not welcome. What idiots. I'm not in a diplomatic state of mind tonight. I'm just saying that the left is so intolerant. And here's the danger of it. Here's the danger of it. You... You, in, you increase your IQ by iron sharpening iron, by thoughts sharpening thoughts, by having ideas sharpen ideas. And sure, I'm going to get pushed back and people say, well, Lance, what about this? What about that? And it's good for you because when you have disagreements, you have a little bit of mental sharpness. You know why the, why the universities went down the toilet? It's because the left took over the university. They used to be conservatives on the campus. The conservatives could push back. You know, you say something stupid and then somebody would come back at you like that and iron sharpening iron, making your ideas crisp, finding the flaws in your life. We don't have pushback anymore. And because we live in these silos, you got people that'll never watch a Mark Levin or a Tucker Carlson. Just sit there, you know, with their little, uh, you know, with their hypodermic needle, popping these balloons, all the lunatic balloons of hot air that the left puts up and pop, 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 pop. And they never, they don't hear it. They're listening to their own stuff. We listen to them all the time because they're an ubiquitous, all oh, omnipresent force. Socialism is the suppression and the beating up of all competitive ideas so that just one thought can dominate. It is the nature of the, of, of the devil himself doesn't allow iron sharpening iron, doesn't allow the exchange of thought, doesn't allow the debate and ideas, doesn't allow the, the uh, necessary critique. So the media uh, is, is monolithic, one message, and they all do the same thing because they're controlled by the corporations who fund them. Universities, monolithic, boom. There's no, there's no longer, a, and I'm talking, I'm I'm, I keep looking for this data. I had this data somewhere. I was watching, it was a Levin guy one night. I was watching, maybe this isn't the notebook I used, but I had, he had this, these percentages that he had done. Yeah, maybe this is it. Academics, 20 liberals to every one conservative. In media, the ratio. Isn't it funny? I just opened this book up randomly. What a serendipitous thing. I just opened this book up randomly and there was the statistics I was looking for for the longest time. I hope I don't shut this book. I'm lose that page. Here we go. Media, 50 to 1. 
This is day, this is research. So that means that in terms of media, there's 50 on the left to every one conservative. This is sick. I don't believe there's that many of them out there. I think they're all in media, politics, and activists. If they are in an academia or in a teacher's union. Anyway, Kenneth Hagin has his prophecy. It's in my book. You got to get the book. Kenneth Hagin, get the book. The Chaos Code, because it's communism. He said he saw communism coming to America. This is 1963. Who in the world sees communism taking over America in 63? He saw it coming to America like a hand out of the ocean. But before it could take hold of the entire country, uh, there, was a, there was a ball of fire that came down on the earth and separated and tongues of fire were on the heads of people. And God had raised up voices on fire and the fire voices were speaking. I need you to share this broadcast. I really do. Because we're battling the suppression right now. It's trying to come against so many of us, trying to keep us from saying what needs to be said. We can't. This guy's not done yet. And I'm a little angry at all the Christian sophisticates who are just spending years writing books and talking, taking pot shots at him. And now you realize, oh, duh. He's actually the pilot fighting off Al-Qaeda with one hand and trying to prosper this journey on the other. He's a billionaire, man. He doesn't need this. Honestly, it has to be a call of God that would have somebody who's got everything they want step into the cesspool and want four more years. God bless him. Billy Graham's son here, Franklin, says these people in Washington don't believe we exist. We got to show up on, on September 26. It's counter, it's, it's not, not, not beneficial to me because I'm doing an event right after that. So here I'm thinking, you know, well, you know, if I, if I get you to go to that event, well, you know, then you won't come to mind. Good. Let's go to Franklin Graham's event. Huh? Let's, do, let's do that. Share that. Go to my website there, Lance Wall now. You know, I don't know what to call this thing. I never know what to say. People say, you know, where do I get it? It's called uh, Lance Wall on Facebook. You guys probably know that. I think you're watching me there now. I don't know how that works, actually. But uh, go there and click on this uh, Franklin Graham. Check it out and share it. Share it. Share it like you really do care. Share this right now. You know why? Because we need a couple of million of us to show up and start freaking these people out. I'm telling you something. It bothers me because your children are going to, you know Kamala Harris. Oh, this she's systemic racist, professor of systemic racism. Dear God, wouldn't you love to have eight years of of Obama-like professorial pontification educating you on systemic racism. America is not systemically racist. You can't even define what the heck it is. Listen, I love scholars. Can you please define systemic racism? Well, specifically in a measurable way. It doesn't exist. Well, Lance, uh, of course it does. No, it doesn't. And I hate seeing good people get bullied. I hate seeing innocent people get picked on. You know, that's the reason why I've always was, you know, I could never really get into uh, the, uh, the battle with homosexuality and the transgender thing. I mean, it's, it's wrong, biblically wrong, but Christians just don't fight. They don't want to fight. You know why? Because we got, we're, because our nature is we're soft hearted. And it's like, I don't want, I'm going to fight with somebody. I don't, I, I don't have a problem with them. I mean, I don't think it's God, but blah, 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 blah. You know, but you, what you don't see is I don't want to see anybody picked on because uh, they, they're struggling with a, their identity and their sexuality. But then you got to look at the other side, which is the, the mean-spirited uh, Nazi activists that are in the... LGBTQ agenda, 
boom, going to make sure your kid, then you got to look at your kid now being bullied because your kid is going to have to sit there in the classroom and agree and go along with it. Or they're going to suffer the reproach of being labeled as a racist homophobe. And that's where I think my generation better wake up. We're letting our kids get set up for eight years of being beat up as systemic white racists when they're the last white racist species you could ever imagine. They're a bunch of kids walking around with Bibles, singing Jesus songs and loving people. And I don't like seeing people get bullied. Now you might say, Lance, is this the spirit of the Lord talking? Is this Jesus talking? I don't know. I don't know. But I suspect it is. You see, we just don't know this side of Jesus. Well, you know, Lance, you should really be more. Like, I know Paul said, you know, I'm just reading, just reading yesterday, where Paul said, you know, that the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be, um, but be, uh, you know, what's the word? Uh, be gentle unto all men, uh, able to teach. Uh, perchance they can uh, they can escape the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him to do his will. And I get that. We should be gentle and we should be apt to teach and we should be meek. Uh, but I want to suggest to you, you read the sermon that Stephen gave before he was stoned. That's right. He was, it's a great sermon and it, and it winds up with this wonderful um, appeal at the very end of it. He says, you stiff neck uncircumcised in heart and ear, you, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, which are which the prophets, haven't your fathers killed? And now you've, you've murdered. Now, you've, now when the Christ has come, you've become his murderers. And uh, listen, that wasn't exactly Dale Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people speech. But of course, the other point is they did kill him, so that might not be the best strategy for sharing your ideas. But the point is, you see Elijah up there on Mount Carmel. He wasn't sitting there saying, uh, God has a wonderful plan for your life. He was basically mocking the false prophets. He's waiting for the fire to fall, and it wasn't falling. He was just having a good time there. Well, I wonder what happened to your deity there, guys. I am it's getting kind of late here. I mean, well, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe they got to go to the bathroom too. Maybe this one's taking a little longer than usual. And that's what he said. I can't believe the holy man of God who's calling fire down from heaven, engaging that kind of potty humor on a holy mountain. Yeah, I don't think we really, I, you know, I think Elijah, I think some of these guys, you wouldn't want them at a cocktail party. Which begs the question, what are you doing having a cocktail party? But I mean, you know what I mean. Like, you don't want to have Elijah showing up. He'd be offensive, I think. I think John the Baptist would be a little eccentric. I don't think Jonah was a particularly likable guy. But uh, I think we misunderstand the, the, the mission of the church. It's not about, you know, look how, where's, where's being likable gotten us, by the way? trodden under foot of men. They don't even know we exist. That's why we got to go up to Washington and show. I'm talking like two me. I swear, if 100,000 show up, well, it's kind of like the Tulsa group. What happened in Tulsa? Well, you know, I, I, Lance has said it. They said the tickets were sold. So what? Go down and not be able to get in. Didn't even try. You know, Jesus says, knock till the doors open. Seek and you'll find. You know, here's what Christians do. I think it's uh, probably safer because of COVID if I stay home and watch Trump from my couch. Oh, yeah, that's how you drive the Nazis out of the bunkers in Normandy. You sit at home and put in a video and try to invade them with Skype messages. We're going to have to show up, people. You got to register to vote. You got to get your friends registered to vote. You got to basically make it an apocalyptic urgency. You've got to let them know that this is for us the end of the world. It really is. It's the end of the economy. It's the end of, I mean, um, it's unfortunate to have to tell you this, but uh, after you look at uh, the last couple of months, you think, you think uh, I mean, I'm, I'm giving the devil credit for taking advantage of every opportunity he's got, but let me tell you something. It's like the Lord himself is saying, you want me in this thing or not? You want me You want me here? You guys want me here? You want me to stick around or what? I'll tell you why it happened. It happened because Christians were saying, 
Well, you know, do you think Trump's going to make it? I think the economy's pretty good. I think he's going to get reelected. You know, so and so profit, so and so said he's going to have two turns. So and so, boom, we're re we were not doing our job for four years. We're not doing it now either. But at least we're getting arrested and shutting down our churches and threatening our pastors with fines. And I mean, think about this: you got pop pot, you know, you can marijuana dispensaries, Planned Parenthood, and state stores. They're open. Bible studies, singing. No, let's. Now wait a second. Do you? Rem this is so insane. This is what communists do. They don't fear us. They could care less. We've had Donald Trump out there being our defender. We've had half half-heartedly supported him, and he's been the shepherd at our club and the wolves for us. Do you remember? Final thought. Do you remember when they had the Michigan bees? Oh, styrofoam brain reporters. Remember how they were making a big deal about the, the conservatives and Christians in Michigan who were showing up driving in their cars and standing on the front lawn of the state house, some of them with a an RA rifle, vest on. Remember how, how they freaked out? This is intimidation. This is pure intimidation. Here these people are, I mean, standing on the wall and marching and driving their cars in protest, and this is sheer intimidation and reckless and dangerous and spreading the virus. And it was a cons Now go back and look at a conservative riot. It's laughable. It's a sitcom moment. That's what they were having a meltdown over. Then you've got these other guys blowing up buildings, attacking police, attacking the White House, flamethrowers, explosives. Well, they're ventilating their justifiable angst and anger over what we don't know, but they're upset. And you know, they've been indoors a lot. People got to blow up the steam. Christians go dutifully with their little flags and posters and make America great again. And one or two guys walking around tough in their NRA jacket and oh, the liberal press. This is sheer Nazi intimidation. Yeah, till you got the uh, crazy riots and then it's like, well, let it roll, baby. That's the way it is. You know, people got to, they, they have a right to be upset with this president. After all, he, look how he screwed up Obama's economic recovery. You know what? We know they're going to cheat. We know they're going to cheat. We know they're going to stuff it. Right now, they got thousands, hundreds of thousands of names on ballots, you know, and they're making up names left and right and doing their deal. How many doubt that? Not for a moment. So the only solution is there has to be such an overwhelming mandate, an unusual, bizarre mandate, 30 million Christians don't vote. I, I wish one guy says, one writer goes, perhaps Kamala Harris, if she's president, is going to be the um, cause for the humbling of the church in America. No, I don't think so. Here's what I think would be the humbling. If every Christian that votes for her and votes and doesn't vote and isn't registered, if they are on a, an, how about we just, we go public. We all just let people know what we think. We engage in a great debate and all the Christians vote. And we let people know if we don't vote, guaranteeing, not too far from now, every knucklehead that votes wrong or doesn't vote will be repenting privately. But it will increase the pressure of humbling and humiliation if we all know who they are. That's a far more logical way of making sure that we could tie in some fruit to this experience. It's kind of like reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Save yourself the pain of having to go through this. Read Dietrich Bonhoeffer and look at the journal 
of a pastor who gets martyred after they didn't engage the political system in Germany and live to regret it. And then you'll see, you can have, you can have, um, you know, vicarious repentance. You just go back and say, whoops, well, that really is El Sucko. We don't want that. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, pastor, who uh, was kind of discovered the resistance wasn't very organized as Hitler came to power. Everybody loves to call Trump Hitler. He's the, this is the one thing I've learned about the left. Everything they say, I mean, running down to the, the remember the Michigan protests, the big deal? Everything they say is actually applies to them because that's the nature of that kind of a deception. All right, well, look, it's late at night. There's 2,000 people on. I don't want to keep rambling, rambling, rambling. But uh, I got a few things I want to say, and I'm not going to say them right now, but I'm going to tell you this. Hold it right there. Don't go anywhere. I don't know what I did with my book. God's Chaos Code. Get the God's Chaos Code. You got to get the God's Chaos Code. I was going to call it God's Chaos President, but I couldn't do that because I saw the left was actually using the word, calling him a Chaos President. I got so mad. I said, that's it. We got the five pieces of the code. Five pieces pieces. Each of those letters explains what's happening right now. And uh, what God wants us to do to get our way out of it and what we've got to occupy. And the big battle we're going to find out is for nations. We're in the game for nations. And I don't think God wants us to go down. I don't think it's his plan for us to go down. So listen, I'm going to tell you something. The Lord's going to pour out his spirit we're going to have light. It's going to be brighter. We're going to have sunshiny days coming. Trust me on this one. It's going to be sunshiny days coming. And uh, because the darkness is going to increase, it's going to get darker. That's what Isaiah says. But upon you, my light will shine. Upon you, my light will shine. And kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you're mobilizing the body of Christ right now, that you're working around those, uh, those inadequate leaders that will not lead. And we're asking you right now to raise up your army, raise up and let the promotions come forth. Let the Davids rise up and move around these the quagmired souls that don't know what to do with Goliath. I pray that you raise up that mighty army of God right now. I pray for the millions to suddenly find their strength and find their voice and that we're not surrendering our sons, our daughters, our children, or America. America belongs to Jesus. America doesn't belong to, to, to Marxist professors at Berkeley. America belongs to Jesus, and I thank you, Lord that you're going to give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are going to understand that there is an awakening, awakening, awakening coming into those who are willing to do the work. I pray for boldness, 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 the spirit of boldness that comes by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I know you're going to show us now how to reach out and mobilize 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100. Oh, I pray for the remnant to arise in Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost intercessors, Holy Ghost intercessors, that there's going to be an activation, an activation right now in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, up there in northern uh, Maine. There's going to be the shifting and the movement of God's Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you're actually moving now in Arizona. You're moving you're moving your people in Texas and Florida and Arizona and North Carolina. Oh, my God, I pray in Jesus' name for the stirring, stirring, stirring. And you're raising up the new organizers. There's a movement, and the movement comes from the bottom up. Movements are bottom up. Reformations are top down. Movements are from the bottom up. We're not done yet. It's not time to go down. It's not time to go down. There's time to be silent and there's a time to speak. There's a time for peace. There's a time for war. Guess what time it is. All right, share this with your friends and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Got that? Thanks for staying up with me here tonight. Thank you for being with me here on this, this evening. And uh, I don't know why I'm tapping my screen. I just have to hit the finish.
Thanks for joining me on this broadcast. And you know, we could stay connected together. If you subscribe, you're going to be updated on the next broadcast that comes out. And you could like this right here, and we could actually start to create a movement of connected people.